I was flabbergasted because I thought that in this country, it takes very, very serious motives to track and spy on a journalist like that. Motives that are so serious, in fact, that it's never happened before. All right, we've got Sean Henry following this one for us. Sean, the police chief defended the decision to get those warrants. Yeah, and he said two things during the news conference this afternoon. First, he said the warrant was an exceptional measure, and he also says he believes in freedom of the press. At one point, he actually said he didn't have a problem with it. But he also pointed out that if one of his officers is suspected of criminal activity, they have to investigate and that they followed all the procedures in this case. But this begs the question, and it was asked at the news conference this afternoon, who decides what's exceptional? Well, we do have some investigators who are in charge in that, in that situation that was internal affair, and they're making sure that every, every tool they can take are taken, and if we have to use that one, we'll use it. Now, Sean Pichet said that this was all about an internal investigation. What more can you tell us about that investigation? Uh, yeah, their officer, Faisal Jalidi, uh, they saw he, like I say, had been in contact. And in the days following those calls, articles were published in the media about cases Jalidi had information about. And now Jalidi is facing charges, including perjury and obstruction of justice. Now, like I say, is pointing the finger straight at the Kader administration. He says they like to have things vetted before it becomes public. And he thinks those leaks are are the reason he became under surveillance. And I am certain that when there are leaks concerning the police department, I'm certain that the office of Denis Coderre is on the phone uh, asking questions of uh, the police director here in Montreal. This creates a culture of paranoia where there's a premium on finding uh, journalistic sources. All right, some serious allegations there. What did yeah. the mayor have to say? Uh, yeah, he actually cut off the reporter who asked that question. Uh, he denies it, of course, and he says that, yes, it's normal that the administration would talk to the police, but there's a difference between having a conversation and getting involved. And he says it has to stay that way. They will not get involved. They won't even uh, go in to ask it for an inquiry into what happened. Not getting involved in, in police. I know it's, that's why it's a cash 22 I think that we are there to make sure that we're vigilant, that we are protecting freedom of press, we do protect our democracy. At the same time, there is a, a judicial process that we have to respect. There is ways from public safety, there's a code, you know, we, we are uh, regulated by a criminal code and a procedure code and you have to take a look at it. And uh, there's why, that's why there's lawyers and they're going in front of judges. All right, to wrap up here, some journalists asked today who else, what other journalists were uh, followed over the years. And uh, Montreal Police was not able to give that information quite yet. Uh, Philippe Pichet says that if they were to you, they would not rule out using that exceptional measure again if they have to. All right, Sean Henry, thank you. You're welcome. Now, this all rippled all the way to Quebec City today. The province's public security minister says he's also asking for some answers from police. Martin Coitou isn't ruling out legislative changes either to protect journalists or whistleblowers. We should not reject any possibility. What is important today is stand all together to defend this principle of independence. We need an independent press capable of doing its job. We need a government that is responsible for what it is responsible for, but doesn't intervene directly in the judicial system or in the work of the police services. But there are rules, and those rules need to be respected. And media lawyer Mark Banty says he's stunned by the spying. He says he's never seen anything like it in the 35 years he's been practicing. And in terms of getting a justice of the peace to sign off on it, here's what needs to be considered. He has to be assured that there are no other sources of information available to the police. And if there are other sources of information, that those sources have been exhausted before he issues the search warrant. If the judge is not satisfied that the police have taken every conceivable step to obtain the information, he must refuse the search warrant. And one final note on this story. The case is going to be back in court November 24th when it is expected the warrants will be unsealed.